Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today, something is very wrong in Lakeview. You know it, but nobody believes you, especially not the adults who dismiss you for being a kid. You've lived here your whole life, but it was only a little while ago that you started to notice the strange sounds at night, and now the new kid at school has vanished. You're sure that a hideous creature has been unleashed on your town. Now it's up to you to defeat it. The Snallygaster situation, Kids on Bikes board game, is a cooperative game and it's set in the world of the Kids on Bikes RPG. It's for two to five players, takes 45 to 60 minutes to play, is for ages eight and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. Today, I'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. The Snallygaster Situation Kids on Bike board game is a cooperative game for two to five players. One player plays as the lost kid behind a shield and they are secretly in one of the buildings. They have a different turn flow from the others and they're playing cards to try to give hints as to where they might be based upon what cards they cover and what cards they're playing. While all the other players are kids moving around, searching locations, trying to find and rescue that lost kid. But each game's different because you'll be going against a different monster. And each of these monsters have different goals that you'll need to achieve in order to win the game and they all have different difficulty levels. And some of them have additional boards and different sort of mini games like trying to fill out this entire board with symbols. But you gotta watch out because the monster's moving around, attacking kids, and the feds are trying to catch them as well. And if that happens too many times, you'll all lose the game. But don't worry because you'll always find a safe haven in the tree houses. And once you find the lost kid, they'll become a character with a special ability that they get to help you as well throughout the end of the game. To set up, first place the board of Lakeview in the middle of the table. At the top of the board, place the Doom Track. And when you place this board here, in the lower left hand side, make sure you're using the side of the board that has the player count you're playing with. In this case, we're playing with the four to five player side. Next, you're gonna take the Doom Marker and put it on the left side up here. You're also gonna take the different symbol tokens, there's four different types, put them in the like piles of themselves, shuffle them up, put them face down as you see here, so that there's no additional icons, it's just the pictures, and you'll place them on the spot that's imprinted below them on the board. Next, find the search item and lost deck. So we're gonna first take some cards out of these. For the search card, you're gonna look for any cards that have these monster triangles in the upper right hand corner. Remove those off to the side for now. Same for the items, anything that has a triangle like this, these are going to be monster cards. You'll set these up later. Put all cards that have this off to the side. And for the lost cards, anytime you see triangles in the bottom left like this, you'll take those cards and remove them off to the side for now. Next, find the search and the star tokens and place them off to the side of the board. Now, this is a cooperative game, but one of the players is going to play as the lost kid. For your first game, have this be the most experienced gamer in the group. This player is going to get the screen in front of them and a new hand token. Next, you're going to locate the paint powered cards. You're going to shuffle them up and keep one of them behind your screen face down. The rest of these will get removed, placed back in the box without anybody seeing what they are. This is a special ability you'll get once you as the lost kid will, will be found by the other cooperative players. Next, outside of the shield, you're going to place the lost kid deck. You're going to be shuffling some monster cards in here later, but keep it outside like that for now. You're going to be placing some search tokens, so you're going to draw cards one at a time. You're going to flip them up, and you're going to look at the location, in this case, the abandoned house. So on the board, we find that number four abandoned house, and we're gonna place one of the search tokens on it. You're gonna do this for four other cards, meaning that you'll have five search tokens on the board. Now, as you do that, you're gonna place a card in the discard pile to the left of the deck. And when the next card gets flipped and you place that lost token, you'll make a second discard pile. When the third one happens, you'll place a third discard pile. There'll always be three discard piles here. For the last two cards that you draw and place the search tokens on, you can place them on any of the two discard piles so that there's still three discard piles. And when drawing these cards in setup, don't worry about anything else on the cards. They don't do anything in setup. Then the player playing the Lost Kid draws one more card from the Lost Deck, places it in front of them face down and secretly looks at it. And this is the secret location that this player is in. It's number two, the McGill's. And then once you know where it is, you're gonna place it face down so no one can see it even if they get up at the table. 
Then the Lost Kid is going to draw four cards from the top of the Lost deck, and they're going to hold these in, these in their hands. They can look at these cards, but they don't want anybody else to see them. Now, each of the other players, they're just going to be kids, set themselves up. Each player is going to get a player aid. They're going to pick a color, and they're going to take the turn order token of that character and the standee and four bike tokens or bike wheel tokens like that. You're going to flip these over and you're going to put them in order. So it might look something like this. You're then going to shuffle the ride deck and you're going to deal one ride card to each kid. Those cards are going to give each kid a special ability throughout the game. Next, you're going to shuffle up that item deck you set aside earlier and you're going to give each kid randomly one item face up and then that deck gets placed off to the side. Keep it face down. Now, if you're playing with two players, the single kid player will actually need to set up and control two kids during the game, and they must keep all their components and actions separate for each kid. Next, each kid's going to take their turn order token and place it in the home spot on that Doom track. If you're playing with four players, meaning there's three kids, you'll take the 2x marker and place it on that circle there. You're going to find the blue feds truck and you're going to place it right on the, here in the upper left side of the board, facing in that arrow direction like that. And you're going to place the red fed truck at the bottom right hand side of the board facing up like that. Now it's time to set up and select the monster you're going to be facing this game. I'm going to help you set up the Jersey Devil, which is difficulty one, but there's difficulties up to four that you can select in future games. First, you'll go ahead and read the front of this. You're going to find this board, unfold it and place it like this. You're then going to shuffle the green item cards and randomly place one item face up in each card space marked on the edge of the board as you see here, these four spots. Next, you're going to find the Jersey Devil standee and place it anywhere in the district where the uh, Lakeview Compass is in the upper right. And then you'll take the eight curse tokens that have the Jersey Devil face on it and you'll place them nearby. Next, you're going to find the five search cards that you removed earlier that have different monster faces on there. Now you're going to take the five cards that have the Jersey Devil icon and you're going to shuffle these into the search deck. You're also going to locate the five Jersey Devil item cards that have sort of green on there as well, but has their logo. You're going to set these off to the side for now. You're then going to find the Jersey Devil goal cards. We have a star and we have the goals of one, two, and three. You'll read the story. We're going to put all the kids at nine, the school, and a star token on 20 St. Luke's Church. So we put the kids at the Lakeview School and a star at number 20 St. Luke's. The object of the game is to fulfill all of the goals for your specific game. In this case, we're playing the Jersey Devil, and we have these three goals. We'll go over these in more detail, but if you accomplish all of these, you'll win the game. But over the course of the game, different things are going to trigger this Doom marker to go down the track, and if it ever ends there, you'll lose the game. Now, the game is played over multiple rounds. Each round, there'll be a certain amount of turns, depending on the amount of players. Now, first, the Lost Kid will take a turn, then the kids will take two turns, then the lost kid will take a turn, then the other two kids, in this case because we're playing with four other kids and one lost kid. I'll show you how these kid turns work in just a moment, but first let's talk about how a lost kid's turn works. Now I'm going to walk through this lost kid turn sequence just like this. Now you have a card, the lost kid does have four cards. They're going to select one of those. Now first they're going to play that card face up on any one of the three discard piles. And this is actually part of the strategy of the game because the Lost Kid has a secret location. They're not allowed to talk about it, but they are allowed to suggest things based upon which cards they decide to cover. For example, we have Renegade Court, we have CLP Dempsey Memorial Park, and we have a flower. Now in this case, none of the kids will know where the Lost Kid secretly is. The Lost Kid will be the only one, but in this video I'm going to just tell you so we can teach you the strategy. The number two, the McGills, is where the Lost Kid is. Again, they're the only ones that know this. And the other cards were Renegade Court, which is this street over here. Then we had the uh, Celia P. Dempsey Memorial, and we had a flower. And so I'm actually going to cover this one, letting them know that I am probably furthest away from there because this is a little closer, and this is, a, I guess, a little closer, and that's the furthest thing away. And so that's going to give them some hint. It also has a hint here that may or may not help. They might say, oh, he covered that and he, he, he put a thing of Lakeside. And sure enough, actually Lakeside is right next to where I am. I just got a little lucky with that card. Then you resolve the spooky actions at the top of the card that you played left to right. 
I'm not going to go over all the actions. They're right on the back of the rule book and clearly say what to do, but I am going to show you the one that we just drew because it does have to do with how monsters move and I want to teach you that mechanism. So first we're going to move the monster one district to the east and then one district to the north. So let's say the Jersey Devil was just in this district. Now a district is an entire spot here in between the roads. The kids, as you'll see, will move space to space, but they're just moving from district to district. So it's gonna move one to the east, so it's gonna go into this district over here. Now, if there was a kid or kids there, they would be attacked. In this case, they're not. Now, we'll talk about attacking in just a moment. Then it's gonna move north. The board ends here. It cannot go north. So in that case, now that's one way to move this uh, do marker down if it can't move, meaning it's gonna move off the board. And remember, if this gets down to here, you've all lost. If when moving the monster, they can move east, like in this case, into two different districts, the lost kid gets to decide which district it moves to. So let's take this example. This was going east, and it went into this district. Now here we see three kids. Now this is going to attack. It's going to attack the entire district and the roads that are, are next to that district. We'll talk more about the roads in just a moment. It's going to attack every kid that is not in a treehouse. This kid is in the treehouse. They're safe. These two are going to get attacked by that monster. And for each kid attacked, you would move this down. So two for those two kids attacked. These kids will then get moved to the nearest tree house. So each one would then go to one of the nearest tree houses. Now in this specific scenario, when the Jersey Devil does attack in a specific district, you'll take one of the curse tokens and place it on one of the buildings in that district. You'll also move the doom track down one. Now if there was a search uh, marker here, it would get discarded and no other token can be placed on this. Now this is very important in this scenario because if the Jersey Devil attacks in the district where the lost kid is and you haven't rescued him yet, and they put this here, the game ends immediately and you've lost. And on top of that, you can't even enter any of the buildings that have a curse token. But let's say there was one of the feds here. Remember, the monster attacks everything in that district, including the roads that are touching it. And now if any fed, the red or the blue, were on the road touching that district, it would also get attacked and it just simply moves three spots following the arrows on the board, going to each of the intersections as one. So for example, this would go one, there's an arrow up, it comes over to here to here, two, arrow down, goes here to three. And that's how the feds move. Some of the lost uh, kid cards that you play, uh, as I mentioned in the back of the rule book, will have some of those feds move. We'll show you how those interact with kids later. As a lost kid, after you've played a card, and you've done the spooky actions, you'll then place a search token in the bottom location. In this case, number 12, the Kimballs. So you'll place that so it overlaps the two spots and a place can have more than one search token. After that, you're gonna move the feds one intersection so both fed miniatures will go to the next intersection. And this is where we're gonna talk about how the kids interact with them. So this fed is gonna move from here to here. So that attack from there actually is going to affect this specific kid. Don't forget this one will also move here, but let's resolve this. Now the reason why these Fez miniatures have this square around them is because not only do they occupy the space that they're in, but they also, also occupy the spaces that all surround this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All nine of these spaces, because the square touches all nine of those, the Feds are touching. And so it is touching this square, and so this kid is going to get caught by the Feds. And that's another way that you move this doom marker down one. Now also, no kid can be attacked by a monster or caught by the feds before they take their first turn. And then that kid will flee to the nearest treehouse. Now, interestingly enough, if this blue fed was here, kids are safe in the treehouse, so they wouldn't have gotten caught by the feds there. After that, the lost kid is just going to draw a card into their hand, so they have four cards again. And looking at the upper left there, again, in summary, the lost kid is going to play a card, they're going to put it on one of the discard piles. They're going to perform the spooky action. They're going to place search tokens, move the feds, then draw a card, and that's it. Now, once per game, the lost kid can return the new hand token out of the game. And essentially, they would take the four cards from their lost kid's hand. They'd shuffle those four cards back into the deck. They would draw four cards to replace it. But they would move the doom marker down one as shown on the token. Then it's going to be the kid's turn, and they're going to be able to decide. This was the lost kid's turn, and this is the first turn of the round for the, 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 the normal kids. 
and they get to decide who's gonna take the turns in which order. So again, the lost kid just took a turn. We're gonna have two of these kids in any order that they decide to do two actions, one each. Then the lost kid's gonna take another turn, and then the other two are gonna go here. So let's say we decide, hey, let's have, let's talk together. This is cooperative. Let's have her go because we've got a good plan for her. Now, if you were just playing with four players, again, you'd have the two X here. And when someone went, they would take two turns in a row. But in this case, we're not. So let's just give one action to her. Now, each kid is going to first move and then possibly search. When they move, they're gonna take one of their uh, bike tokens here and flip it down and move that many. Now, these ones, you can move up, down, left, right. These ones, additionally, you could possibly move diagonal, but only two. So we're in the treehouse here. We could go one, two, three, and be in here. Now, if you end your turn on a road, if I'm at one, two, you additionally get one more move for free. So I could use the two token and just get here. But remember the two token is diagonal and I don't want to really waste that. So I'm going to go one, two, three in this case. Flipping this down, I won't be able to flip it up until all of those have been used. Now a couple of notes on moving. You cannot move over a fence. So I could not have come over here. I could not jump over over here. To get to this spot, I would have had to have gone to a space that doesn't have a fence. And I couldn't end my turn in any spot that's affected by the fence. Now you can move through other players, even sneak past districts where a monster is, and even sneak past where fed actually touches, but you can't end your space on where the feds are, for example. So let's say we ended up here, we would discard this search token and we draw a search card. And these cards can do all sorts of things. It tells you bullies, it tells you some story that you can read out, some flavor text, and then you have a choice. You can immediately move up to five spaces or refuse and perform both actions below. So you get to decide what to do there. Now in the case of that card, if we had chose to do the two actions below, this was one of them. It had this symbol on it. And if you have that symbol, you flip this over, you do the action that it says, again, much like all the other actions, and then you place this symbol in front of you. Now on your turn for a free action, you can discard a symbol to move three additional spaces. Symbols can also be used for goals. For example, this goal one, construct the ancient seal. In this case, you'd search around the town and find enough symbols to fill in the seal board. And each time you find a symbol token, you add it to the seal board. So you would choose an empty spot on the seal board to place it. Now, anytime a row or a column is finished, then that card is given to one of the kids and the lost kid gets to decide who's it, who it's given to. However, if any row or column has two identical symbols, you must move the doom marker forward one space. Also keep in mind that your ride card will give you some different abilities that you can use throughout the game. And there's item cards that you can discard on your turn as well. Earlier, we talked about the benefits of being in a treehouse. You don't get caught by the feds or attacked by a monster, but if you search the treehouse, you get to flip all of your uh, wheel tokens over, even if all of them weren't already used. Usually you have to wait till they're all used, then you get to flip them up. And in this case, if you search the treehouse, you can flip them up early. Throughout the game, some item cards you'll be flipping to use to do different things, like go to additional spaces and you'll flip it over. And when you search a treehouse, it allows you to flip this back over to get that ability over again. And finally, you get to place a search token on any building of your choice when you search the treehouse. Now, kids can trade items and symbols with, with each other any point in time if you share a spot with another kid. Let's say you were going to the treehouse, you went through here, and while you were here with this kid, you could trade. Now, you can give them items and or symbols as free actions. And if you're in a treehouse, you can do this with any other kid in any other treehouse as well for free actions. So once you've moved and possibly searched, it'd be the next kid's turn, they would do the same thing. Again, then you do a lost kid's turn and then two other kid's turns. And once that's done, then all of these will go back to the start and you'll start a new round just as I did this earlier. Now again, if the doom marker ever gets to the end, you've lost. But if you've completed all the goals, you've won. But before we get to the goals, let's talk about finding the lost kid. Now, if a kid searches the building where the lost kid secretly is, the lost kid gets rescued. Now that player is going to flip over that powered card. They're going to take the corresponding token to that uh, character and they're going to place it on the building. Now, from now on, they'll be able to move and search during their turn like the other kids do, but they must still play a lost kid card each turn and carry out the four steps as described earlier. And they will get a special ability too that's self-explanatory on the cards. Now, if you search a location for the lost kid and he's not there, you'll move the doom marker down one spot. Now again, what you're trying to do is finish all the goals to win. We've already talked about this specific goal, the, the Jersey Devil Gold Card, which is the first one is to construct the ancient seal. And you do that by filling this entire board with the different symbols. 
and you would then flip this over and read it. I'm not going to do that for you. The second goal is to go to 20 St. Luke's Church where you put the star token and you're going to do a search action there to complete this goal and flip that over. And of course the third goal is something we already talked about which was finding the lost kid. Keeping in mind that if you did not find the lost kid you would have moved the doom marker forward one space. If you do all these goals before the doom marker gets all the way to the end, you've won. And finally on page 13 there are some clarifications that you may need throughout the game. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into the Snallygaster situation kids on bike board game. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but more importantly, so will Renegade Game Studios.